Volunteers for Community Impact, VCI for short, is one of Orlando's best kept secrets in the nonprofit community. They have been around for almost 50 years, but very few Central Floridians know about them. But you may know about some of their programs. VCI's Executive Director, Hugh Jacobs, is here today to tell us about one of their AmeriCorps senior programs, the Foster Grandparent Program. So welcome, Hugh. Foster Grandparents, I think that's one of those programs mm -hmm. everybody's kind of heard about, mm -hmm. or maybe they even experienced it, their child or grandchild mm -hmm. had a foster grandparent come into their school. Mm -hmm. So you were telling me this is actually the oldest program. It, it is. It is the oldest AmeriCorps program. It was created by Lyndon Johnson uh, back in 1964-65. Um, it was part of his war on poverty. Uh, if you remember, Johnson tried to help Amer uh, American seniors get out of poverty um, because we, we had a huge issue back then with with elders being in poverty. So he created the Foster Grandparent Program as a way of uh, helping low-income seniors earn extra money. And the way they would do that is by providing volunteer services to children that needed the educational assistance to to succeed in school. And and as I mentioned, I mean, I had mm -hmm. heard about the foster grandparent program, but mm -hmm. you were telling me some of the details of really what's what's involved and mm -hmm. yes, that there actually is a stipend given mm -hmm. for those volunteer hours. Mm -hmm. So if somebody's kind of, oh gosh, I'd, I'd maybe love to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what do they need to find out about? Well, to be a foster grandparent, you have to be over 55. Um, it's a program for seniors. Uh, the second one is, there's an extensive background check. We check to make sure there's no predators. We, we don't want you know, a sexual predator getting into the program. So we do a fingerprint based check, goes all the way up to Washington and the FBI runs a national check. Um, so if they pass those uh, criteria, then um, we will pay a stipend to the person if they volunteer 25 to 30 hours a week by mentoring and tutoring uh, children that need that extra assistance in school. And I'm sure it's such a valuable mm -hmm. program. You know, we always promote volunteering here mm -hmm. at Active Lifestyles. Mm -hmm. So the volunteer, foster grandparent, goes mm -hmm. into the school system, mm -hmm. and I guess the school kind of coordinates with you mm -hmm. what their needs might be, the, and, and that, then the foster grandparent goes into that school. Mm -hmm. that's, that's correct. We, we run the program but we don't, we don't actually uh, take clients into the program. Our client is the school system. So the school says we could really use these volunteers or uh, a VPK or a faith-based private school. So we put the volunteers in the school or the kindergarten, the teachers, the principals, the education professionals, they're the ones who say this child needs the extra help and we then find them the grandparent, the volunteer, who can provide that service. So they then take the, the volunteer and say, you'll be working with this student and you're gonna work on math or you're gonna work on literacy or you're going to work on socialization. They, de they determine what strategy of service the child needs. Because that's what I wondered, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes you may volunteer and you're thinking, well, I'm going to be reading a book to a class, mm -hmm. but this is really a mentoring one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. with a particular student it is. for particular needs. It is. It is. The, the, the teacher determines what those needs are, and the teacher then works with the volunteer to say, we need you to work two or three hours a day on uh, literacy, on helping them read and, and, and write or maybe they need help with arithmetic and so they need help with, with math. Um, and the, the really young littles, the, the little littles, sometimes they just need socialization. They need to know, no, you don't run and scream, you know, in the classroom and, you know, things like that. And mm -hmm. so they just, uh, again, need a, a grandparent, an older caring adult to provide specialized attention and what that attention is, well, that's up to the teacher. And I think for grandparents, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes they're retired, they're here in Central mm -hmm. Florida, and the grand, their grandkids mm -hmm. are far away across mm -hmm. the country. So mm -hmm. I bet for your volunteers, mm -hmm. it's a really special win-win situation. It, it, it certainly is. Uh, as someone who volunteers with children myself, 
um, seeing the look on their faces, that's, that's more valuable than anything. And our volunteers, the work they provide, the service they provide, uh, they absolutely cherish their volunteering. And during the pandemic, when we were shut down and you know all the children were, were at home looking at computer screens, pretending to, to learn. Oh, I bet they miss their foster grandparents. <laughs> oh my God, the foster grandparents miss the kids. Oh, they, would, sure. they would call us up and they would say, when are we going back into the schools? <laughs> when are we going back into the schools? And uh, they jumped at the opportunity um, when it was safe to, to go back and, and work with the kids. And it is just that added part that it is a stipend. You, mm -hmm. are, you are receiving payment mm -hmm. for those hours that you're putting in. That is, that is true. Mentoring those children. So. You know, and, and I think the most wonderful thing about the stipend that we provide to the foster grandparents is that you know for for folks that retire without savings and they're they're living on Social Security um, uh, when those folks find that Social Security isn't really enough to make ends meet uh, a lot of times they they go out and try and find a job so they go get a job you know at a at a local grocery store and the more money that grocery store pays them, the less money Social Security pays them. So it's, it's you know, this balancing act. How much more can I make before Social Security takes right. it away from me? Foster grandparents is exempt from that. So it's tax-free, it's, it's tax, not income. It's tax-free, it's not income. It goes on top of Social Security. And here's the great thing. If, if a senior is um, getting uh, meal assistance, EBTs, what we used to call food stamps, if they're getting meal assistance or they're, they're living in subsidized housing, again, you know, if you make more money, food stamps decreases your food stamps. So again, you're making, and again, this added benefits. Added benefits. That's great. And we'll have all the information for our viewers. Thanks so much, mm -hmm. Hugh. So if you're a senior who is looking for some additional income while providing a fantastic service to kids in need, then be sure to visit vcifl.org.